welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, I had a whole different video you know in fact I got started on the job and then I had other thoughts and got to watching some guys online and uh, don't remember all their names one of them was Tinker John and the other was I think uh, Wood Creek Workshop I'm not sure you know how an old man's memory is but anyway these guys had DROs that were too long just like me and they cut them off so you know how it is sometimes you want to do something that you think may be poorly planned uh, or may, maybe not the best decision well I'm going to do it I'm going to start with a little DRO cut it down and and then I'm going to if that works out all right then I'll cut bigger DROs down uh, then I don't have to make as much of a fancy bracket, you know, as I had previously planned. And everything should be even better. So, that's what we'll do here. We'll, we'll change our uh, horse in midstream. Um, I guess we'll just get right on with it unless I got something else I can think of later to tell you. Even though I keep inventing new flat surfaces, I still don't have any clean flat surface to work on out here because every time I make a flat surface, it gets piled up with junk. Makes sense, right? Anyway, we're going to cut this guy off. It could get by with being about that long. So it's held together with four screws here. Take the end off. Take the little reader off here, this guy here. Pull him off, take the rubber out, stuff some foam in there and cut the sucker on the bandsaw. After all, hey, every project starts on the bandsaw, right? So I'll start out by unscrewing these little boogers as soon as I find the right screwdriver. Alright, so I'll just pull the screws out and put them in that little magnetic dingus and that'll help that part. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was on there like that. So, I need to mark this end as being the one that goes on there like that. And I will just come down here and put a, a mark on here and a mark on here. And I don't know if they should be alike. How's that look? Alright, let's bring the little reader out of there you can see down in there I guess let me move it to where you can see and we'll just let him just come right right on out he's rolling along in that slot there and got a spring on him I guess to hold him tight there you go there's a little ball there it pushes into that socket right in the middle of everything so this guy looks pretty delicate to me because these little straps like that you know cables like that they're they're never really tough so I better put this guy uh, like that guy right there they're never really tough so I need to put this guy someplace safe until I get through messing up the other part all right, so now then we'll pull the rubber strips out. All right, come on out of there. Come on. I guess I probably need some needle nose. I'll find when we come back. All right, we got needle nose. I found a, a replacement on-off switch. Oh, that's right. In this video, the on-off switch problem doesn't exist. Well... I found the on-off switch replacement on eBay, uh, not eBay, Amazon, for uh, 17 bucks, shipped, tax and all that, which is uh, considerable less than uh, than what uh, Grizzly wants for the same switch. They got the same sticker on the back and everything, totally identical. All right, so 
now then I've got to measure things off again to be absolutely certain I'm right and then we'll mark this thing okay eleven and a half inches will will give us plenty of travel and so I'm gonna mark it right right there now that's that's not much shorter than what I've got and I can see you saying well why bother if that's the only change you're going to make but uh, I better go back and look at it again because I think I was going to cut it up here I think I counted this in the in the eleven and a half inches so let me go back and look again alright so the first guy I watched cut her off with a bandsaw and he got by with it the next guy I watched cut it with a hacksaw and he got by with it so here goes you know to, to say that I'm nervous is kind of putting it a, a bit mild you know an understatement if that's what you want to say uh, all right here we go did it now we'll try and figure out how to cut the glass off a little bit shorter all right so we've cut it now it's time to clean the crud out of the end there and see if the glass survived well the glass seems to have survived got a little bit of a chip right here on the end but I don't need that much of it so I'm going to try to reach in there with my Dremel and cut it back a little bit probably the way to go although I could mill out the end of this guy and just leave it the heck alone I think that's what I'll do here's the piece that I cut off you can see the glass is still in there but broken a little bit right there where I cut it and it broke on the correct side not to cause me any trouble although I would have had more than enough length there anyway so we're going to take this guy here and set him out of the way it's got that little green thing in there a little support for this guy and I'm probably going to want him so I'm not going to throw it away I'll pry that little green jobby out and glue him into the other section to hold that end of the, the glass scale nice and firm and I will fix this right here now that means that the, that the video that I'm doing right now stops for a couple of days because I have to wait until the switch for the mill comes in which is in another video but what the heck you know all right we'll hold off and take a break for a couple of days this is what the scale looks like of course you get some kind of a little 
strip of something inside it there or maybe it's on the surface I can't tell that I don't feel a spot so chances are that little silvery film is on the inside but this is the piece that got cut off with a, a little jagged end on it but I got the little green piece out and I'll use it to be sure and make the uh, the other glass that's still in there give it another bit of support on the end of it I took my little Dremel and I cut this little bit of the lip off here so to make sure that uh, I've got plenty of clearance from that glass that's in there and this guy here got a little bit dirty inside and all the, the grinding away with my uh, Dremel tool so I'm going to take it into the kitchen and decrotify it and I hate going all technical terms on you there but that's, that's the term for it, decrotify and I'll bring it back and put it together and we'll see if it still works okay faithful viewer I have cut the things off decrotified it went back drilled the holes in it for the little screws decrotified it again assembled it hooked it up to the DRO and now we will see what we see. Will the X scale work right or will it not? Let's put it to uh, zero there. And well, I just hold the scale up there where you can see it. Well, now, how about that? I've only got five inches of movement on the uh, quill of this thing and that right there is the full movement I still got plenty of room left over that I could have made a mistake and got it all messed up and there you are I actually did it and I didn't break it and that a miracle? Wow Bubba will be proud of me alright folks I, I'm going to do <coughs> one of the other scales but I'm not going to do it on camera after all you've already seen it once I and mean, I don't know you don't want to see it again so this is where this uh, where this video is going to stop but I'll tell you when it comes to drilling the holes I used a uh, <coughs> a drill bit that was about four thousandths uh, smaller than the screws and then I didn't try to tap the hole or anything I just ran the screws into the hole and they cut their own threads and they stayed in good and tight and there you are you can cut off a, a DRO scale even with a bandsaw and it'll work out there you go well couldn't sleep so here I am up four sun up and uh, got a blanket on because the boss lady keeps the temperature at night about the same as you'd have on a balmy January day in the northern Yukon and uh, so I'm you know not gonna freeze to death in here but anyway uh, I got to thinking about when I was working in the evil polluting refinery I, I started doing that kind of thing when I was about 21 years old and, uh, and it was just a whole new world to me I was just as happy as if you know it was a pig in mud <laughs> yeah I was I was tickled to death the whole thing just fit me perfect it was it was a way I liked to work and it was a way I liked to live and and by golly there I was I was home you know I had a bird's nest on the ground and uh, anyway you got operators in these in these places and, and operators are are a lot that uh, pretty unusual people normally uh, they go out there and they do things where maybe they're filling a tank car or emptying a tank or something where they got to stand long time watching something or you know waiting on something to happen and their mind is working while they're doing that they'll, they'll be scheming up some trick to play on another operator or, or some way to devil an unpopular supervisor or something like that you know and and you know like they say the devil makes work for idle minds and uh, 
anyway so I'm working in this one refinery and and as, as they have to do they have to hire some young folks now and again to replace the ones that retire and, and it's kind of like they take a sheep and throw him in amongst the wolves you know and uh, so in this one particular unit well, they had a lot of light materials like propane and stuff and and they're worrying about leaks there because it's already above the you know the burning point of, of the propane all it's it's got the heat it's got the fuel all it needs is the oxygen and so there you go that's the situation's right eventually some of it's going to leak out you know and there's going to be a little fire or something so they bring this new kid in and that face first thing happens the safety man you know tells him all this stuff about you know being safe and maybe on this unit they use all non-sparking tools like aluminum and brass wrenches and stuff like that and so he's he's already primed and, and so the supervisor comes out and throws this lamb amongst the wolves so to speak and uh, so this, this guy's gonna you know show him the ropes and train him and everything that he you know learns how to take care of himself in there and so uh, he takes him out and shows him around the unit and first thing he does is he gets this long copper wire he says I'll tell you what kid he says you're gonna to have to wear this on your belt for a while he said it will be a couple of weeks and you'll learn how to do without it he says uh, but you need to put this on your belt and this wire will drag on the ground and uh, it'll dissipate all the static electricity you might build up so you don't start a fire or something so the kid you know he wanders around with it a little bit and then he asks, well how come these other guys don't have a wire on their belt and the old hand says, oh, well, they, they've already learned how to, you know, go around here without generating static electricity. You know, he says, they know how to grab stuff and discharge in a safe place. And, and then how not to get charged up, you know, in the first place. He says, you, you'll get owned all that. So <laughs> this kid wore that wire, ground wire dragging on the ground for about a week before he realized, you know, he was just <laughs> being taken. Uh yeah, that's that's the life in a in an evil polluting refinery, you know. So that's the end of that one. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.